Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Brett Hall, and today we're going to talk about how to configure uh, Cube for transport layer security. So um, this is a um, continuation video from something we talked about in the introduction to Cube video, in which I was describing some of the use cases for Cube and how primarily how Cube can be deployed at the edge of the network to provide security for an organization. Well, in my second use case, I talked about how Cube can provide session control for uh, organizations that have different types of call control platforms at remote sites. And specifically, um, using TLS encryption to secure the signaling in the media traffic to provide increased security. So whether you have a dedicated private um, transport, like an MPLS transport, or whether you have a unsecure public transport like the internet. Um, I wanted to talk about how to configure TLS with Cube today and uh, show to you how easy it is so that if you are a security conscious organization, you could easily step through uh, the, the process that I'm gonna highlight for you and uh, also leverage the examples I'm gonna give to you to configure TLS within your cube environment. So uh, without further ado, um, here are the high level steps that we're gonna be taking today to configure cube for TLS. So step one, we're going to generate some RSA keys. I've already done that for you today and uh, I'll give you the commands that uh, you can use if you're interested in this. Um, but the, the second part is to create the trust points and. And these trust points are basically just certificate stores that we'll use to import our certificates. And uh, we'll use these certificates for encryption and decryption of our uh, secure IP packets. Um, from the command line, we're gonna also create certificate signing requests. Now, typically after you create your CSR, you ship your CSR off to a team that uh, uses a certificate authority or something to sign the certificate, they send it back. I've also uh, taken care of that step for you today. Luckily, your router admin is the same guy that manages the admin of the CA, so that makes it easy. But then, uh, last but not least, we assign our trust point to our signaling, and uh, the configuration on Q for TLS is, uh, for the most part, finished up. And we'll still have to go back to Communications Manager and configure our SIP trunk for TLS and SRTP, but I'll show you how to do that. We'll, uh, we'll take care of that and it takes less than two minutes. So um, from a call routing perspective, uh, one thing that we shouldn't forget about is configuring the dial peer for TLS and also SRTP. And again, I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. So, um, before I get into the commands, let me just go ahead and exit out of my PowerPoint. So what I wanted to do is kind of orient you a little bit with my communications manager. And again, I try to mirror the different use cases up. Uh, essentially, I have two router platforms. I have a, I have a cube um, platform, um, a 2921 series platform running cube. And as you can see, it's already been assigned a encrypted SIP trunk profile. It's up and working. What we're gonna be working on today is um, uh, configuring this 4331 platform, which is also running Cube, but it's currently operating in a non-secure mode. We're gonna work on configuring that so it can be secure. And we'll have end-to-end -end security if, for example, um, a user from a site where the 2921 is located needs to make a secure call to the site where the 4331 is located. So there's that. Um, now just transitioning back to the PowerPoint and my command line, um, as I mentioned, I've already generated the RSA keys. I'm not gonna really do that today, um, but this is the command. You basically um, configure crypto key generate RSA modulus, pick your modulus, strength. In my case, I picked 2048. Uh, also, um, make sure to choose exportable and give it a label. Uh, 
for some of you, you may actually already have RSA keys generated, but they could be configured for the box itself to support something like uh, SSH or something. Um, give it a unique label, and uh, in my case, I give, give it the label kubetls. So the first thing we're going to really look at is the trust point. And uh, just to orient you a little bit, uh, we need, if we're using um, CA signed certificates, we need two separate trust points. We need one for the CA certificate itself, and then also another trust point for the cube, for the server certificate of cube to, um, to support TLS. And so for some of you, you might have a more complex uh, PKI infrastructure. You might have subordinate CAs. If you do have the subordinate CAs, make sure to also import um, the trust points for the subordinate CAs as well. So you can have a full certificate chain. Excuse me. So um, anyways, let me copy and paste this, these commands in here. And um, quickly, I'll just kind of explain what these commands are providing, what they're doing. Um, so we're going to enroll this, uh, this PKI uh, via terminal, and we're going to use the PEM formatting, the, fem, the PEM type of formatting. We don't need anything um, related to serial number or IP address to be in this trust point, so we can specify none. We also um, are choosing not to do any kind of revocation check on the certificates. And so um, this just makes it simple. If for some reason you want to do revocation check, you know, let's maybe sync up, sync up on that on a separate um, video or something like that. But for the sake of this conversation, we're not doing revocation check. And then um, subject name. So let me just bounce back to my Chrome web browser for a second and talk about subject name. So whenever you configure um, CA signed certificates, um, you're going to have to download the self-signed certificate from the CA. And uh, like I said, potentially even some subordinate CA certs. Um, Sometimes the CA administrators do not always tell you exactly what the subject name should be, but uh, as you can see, it's a field that we need to work on within Cube. Um, what you can do is if they share the certificate with you, and it needs to be a base 64 encoded certificate from the CA, um, you can copy this, the, um, the uh, certificate string and put it into this website called CertLogic, certlogic.com slash decoder. And um, as you can see, it gives you all the information about that certificate. Um, the common name of my certificate is Beast, as you can see. But what's interesting is you can literally um, decode the subject name. You could copy the subject name and um, put it directly into your cube router. So therefore you're aligning your configurations to um, the CA certificate that you've downloaded from your organization. So that's pretty much it for the, the CA trust point. Let me just go back and grab this config for my cube server certificate trust point. And pretty much um, the parameters are all the same. Uh, I do have the option of giving it whatever kind of subject name I want to. And I just chose cube two here to make it simple. Um, but the last thing you'll notice is um, I'm going to reference the key pair that I created in my first step uh, when I generated the RSA keys. And uh, I'm going to match that label up I gave it earlier. So make sure you um, your RSA key pair matches the label of your RSA um, keys. So the next thing we're going to do is um, is we're going to create the CSR. And we can go ahead and type this command. It's, it's, uh, it's short enough to type. As long as you don't buy me uh, typing, typing this stuff in and fat fingering things. So as you can see, um, it's pulling the, um, the subject name from my trust point. It's also pulling the host name of my cube router. But again, it doesn't really matter which, uh, which subject name you use. Um, as an optional configuration parameter, you could also use subject alternative name. 
and within the trust point. And um, you can give that field a go as well. But, um, but by default, it doesn't really provide the certificate request to the terminal. So you gotta make sure you specify yes. You'll copy and paste this into a text file, send it off, like I said, to the CA administrator and then get it back. So um, now that we've done that, now we can start importing certificates into our trust points. And uh, th there's two main commands here. There's um, the authenticate command that you'll use for bringing in the CA certificate to the trust point. And then um, for, the ser uh, for the cube server certificate, we're gonna leverage the PKI import certificate. So um, again, just quickly, uh, we're gonna go in and specify, we're gonna import now our server certificate to the root CA trust point. I already have that certificate opened. And again, I'll show it to you real quick. But um, you just copy and paste this, uh, this string into this field, hit enter a few times, and um, you're good to go. Now you'll notice it gives a fingerprint for their certificate. If you want to, you can also leverage the, um, that cert logic page to compare your, your hashes. So for example, um, D936, 69B, D936, you can see um, this fingerprint, the SHA-1 fingerprint matches up. And um, it also matches up the MD5 fingerprint. So we're gonna go ahead and accept this certificate into the device. We also need to import the CA certificate into the cube trust point. So we can um, go ahead and copy this into the cube trust point, um, mainly just to validate the certificate chain. Again, the, the CA is what actually signed the server certificate for a cube. So by doing this, this helps validate the certificate chain. Um, now that we've entered our CA certificate into the router, now it's time to actually import the, uh, the cube server certificate, which again uses that import keyword. And again, I've already um, done that for you. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit longer, but uh, you simply copy and paste the base64 encoded certificate string into the router. And uh, as you can see, uh, pretty straightforward. The router certificate was successfully imported into this trust point. So um, the hard work is done. Um, now all we need to do is assign the trust point that we're gonna be using for our SIP messages. And this particular uh, configuration is actually under SIP UA. So make sure to type the SIP UA uh, configuration parameter in there or else you're gonna run into issues. But one thing I'll show you, it's kind of interesting. When you configure your, your TLS signaling, you have the ability to specify a remote uh, address or, or an IP network to a certain trust point. Or uh, if you wanted to, you could leverage the same trust point for everything. So if you have a simple configuration where you're just having um, one communications manager to peer up with, um, maybe that's what you do. You just configure a default trust point. In my example, I like to be more specific because you never know what's gonna come up later. And um, if something does come up later, then you have the ability of specifying the, uh, the IP network. So um, my communications manager is very simple, just one node with the slash 32 subnet mask. And um, once I put that in, as you can see, I have the ability of specifying my cube TLS, TLS trust point. So um, my configuration of my cube is done. Let's um, bounce back to communications manager here for a second. And let's uh, configure the SIP trunk to use TLS and SRTP. So make sure to check off this SRTP allowed box. Um, make sure to scroll down and find your SIP trunk security profile. Um, 
it's going to be my encrypted SIP trunk security profile now, which is what I'm already kind of using with my other cube device. And um, make sure you don't forget to change the destination port to 5061, which is the default port for SIP TLS traffic. So uh, after hitting save, make sure to reset. Again, the, the changes will not take effect until you reset your trunk. But I wanna show you one more thing here. And, and again, as this thing comes up, the, the encrypted SIP trunk security profile, um, you need to make sure you also have the subject name under your SIP trunk security profile. If you don't have it here, uh, you're most likely going to um, get one-way traffic. So uh, Cuba Build will be able to uh, understand any kind of SIP TLS signaling packets from Communications Manager, but uh, Communications Manager is not going to be able to trust or authenticate any kind of TLS signaling from Cube without this without this uh, string in here, the subject name. So uh, make sure you have that in there. Well, let's go back to our trunk and see if this is working. And uh, you can see it is, it just came up like not even a minute ago. So that's good news. If we go back to our cube device, uh, we can verify this. We can do a show uh, SIP TCP TLS show connections. And you can see, I actually have an active connection, an active connection over port 5061 on my cube. So um, pretty straightforward, right? Um, now, this is just configuring TLS within cube. If you want to route calls over TLS, the last step you, uh, you'll need to take is configure your dial peers. And again, um, the main steps in the dial peers are to specify 5061 on your session target, uh, specify TLS under your transport, and then SRTP for the media. So um, we do a show run. You can see uh, in my example, I'll just pick on uh, I'll just pick on this outbound dial peer right here, 201. Um, I have a session target, IPv4 colon an IP address, followed by colon 5061. Uh, I also have session transport TCP TLS, and I've made sure to specify SRTP. So hopefully uh, you see how easy it is to configure TLS encryption within Cube. And uh, you have a better understanding now of how to work with certificates within Cube so that uh, you can actually get TLS working in your environment. Um, if you like it, feel free to hit like on uh, the video. Uh, feel free to subscribe for future videos that I'll be coming up with. If you have any suggestions, feel free to drop me a note. And um, yeah, hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video and. And it's Christmas time around here, so uh, wish you all a Merry Christmas and uh, Happy Safe New Year. Have a great day.